Welcome to Engine Battles. In this video, three developers will make a game in 10 minutes, then one hour, and finally one day using different game engines and around a given theme. The theme this time around is real-time strategy. Wishbone Game will represent Unity, Floki will carry the Unreal banners, and Tumbleweed will be using Godot. With that said, let's begin with the 10-minute warm-ups. Real-time strategy games are known for their in-depth gameplay systems with almost limitless choices, which I'll just ignore and pretend I didn't know because I'm already running out of time, and I'm known for my YouTube channel. <laughs> wow, that wasn't very smooth. Let's see if you can guess what game I'm making. I'll start by making a base for you and your enemy out of these BBCs, and then I'll add elixir, I mean coins, that you can spend on your troops, I mean, uh, units. Then I'll slap a spear into the scene, which is supposed to be a human sitting on horseback, write some AI, take a look at the time, what? Oh no. Uh, I ran out of time, so I present to you Smash Royale, where the only thing happening are the 999 error messages, because who the f*** thought it was a good idea to give us 10 minutes? I mean, I could probably make Flappy Bird in 10 minutes, but not Clash Royale. So I did kind of break the rules a little, and I went 10 minutes over. It's still not really a strategy game at all, I mean, the only thing strategic about the whole thing is the slight change I made to the name so that Supercell doesn't sue me. I can only imagine what the other guys have made, though. Hi! I'm Floki, and I'm here to participate in some sort of game dev challenge. I haven't looked at what I'm supposed to do yet, so let's have a look together, shall we? Make an RTS game in 10 mi- What the f Yeah, so in 10 minutes, there's not much I can do, but I did manage to whip up a quick spawning script. Every few minutes, a random ball will spawn. This ball will move towards this pillar, and if it touches the pillar, it loses health. In order to defend against these balls, you can spawn your own balls, which will move towards the closest enemy ball and destroy it. Yeah, I know, it's a lot of balls. I like balls. Anyway, that's basically it. For real-time strategy, it's definitely in real time, but there isn't much strategy, so I'd say I'd get at least a 2 out of 3. So my goal for the 10 minute game was to be a little guy running around collecting money and fighting enemies. So the first thing I did was make a player sprite. I tried to save time by using this gradient fill texture instead of drawing a sprite. Didn't end up working, but I did save time by using Godot's built-in player script for the character body 2D and uh, cut out and modified some of the code. Tried copy and pasting the sprite node, but I uh, ended up having some sizing issues. Oh, that's really tall for some reason. And uh, after that, I started misspelling the action names, deleting them right after I made them. Oh, I deleted it again. Oh my goodness, I'm in a rush. I'm freaking out. After that started working, I decided to draw out a quick sprite, uh, learning from my mistakes. So I drew out this little dollar bill. And I went back and added some collision for the player and the money so that they could detect and we could collect money in the game. Uh, after that, I set up some UI that allowed me to display to the player how much money they had. At this point, I was absolutely running out of time. I had maybe like 10 seconds left. Seconds before, I fixed an error and I run the game. And finally, it, it works. It works. This is a real-time strategy game. Amazing. Beautiful. It's so good. I did spend a little too much time trying to get the colors to work, and that was not important. We'll just, we'll just say, since we didn't have enemies in the game like we intended, we'll just say that these are snakes that we're fighting off that ate our money. I think, it, I think it's pretty good. It's pretty good for a game. Very easy to strategize. Uh, just just beautiful game all around them. By the way, guys, if you also want to learn how to make video games, then we've just created a brand new course, The Launcher. You'll learn the fundamentals of Unity, programming and game art while actually making a complete video game. You'll also gain access to an incredible community, a game idea cheat sheet, a special game jam competition and more. For a special and limited Black Friday deal, the course is 80% off, which makes it super affordable and there's even a 40-day money-back guarantee. You can join with the link in the description and we can't wait to see what you create with it. So with that said, let's see what our challenges created in one hour. If you were expecting my games to improve, I am so sorry. Welcome to another season of ruining my reputation as a game developer. In this episode, I made the most deep fried 3am idea that I've ever had. Oh, you think I'm being dramatic? Welcome to Economy, where the world's economy is falling apart because all the cows are being taken by aliens. So you just sit there with like 12 cows that, <laughs> that look like this and two massive f***ing sci-fi orbital laser cannons as you ward off the aliens in their flying saucers and try to destroy their home planet, all while the value of the dollar plummets with each cow taken. 
Unfortunately, I didn't get to finish it, so it's a total disaster. We're stuck here with the Garden of Banban looking graphics, so please don't play economy. It's not worth it. But you really gotta give me points for creativity. I mean, the others probably made a medieval base building game or something, and I'm out here innovating. Unity's shaking in their boots right now watching me represent them. Okay, so now I have one hour, which is still absolutely insane considering the RTS genre is one of the most programming heavy genres. But I do have a fun concept in mind, which could be doable. The idea is that the player gets to place houses that cost wood. These houses generate more wood, which can then be used to make more houses or spawn boats. The boats move in a straight line towards the enemy boat base, but the enemy base also creates boats. If your boat collides with an enemy boat, both boats get destroyed. Basically, you have to outboat boat the enemy boat boats and destroy their boat boat base to win. Everything boat boat? Yeah, so the game is kind of cool, but it's way too easy. And sadly, I didn't have more time to make it more challenging or balanced. <clears throat> so first with the hour, I started off by making a little supermarket scene. My goal for this game was to collect resources such as fruits and vegetables from nearby aisles and then shoot them at enemies. I originally planned for there to be a resource uh, kind of management system but i didn't have enough time in the hour to implement that so i was just focusing on getting uh, a basic ammo counter for these for these bananas and watermelons in the game first the plot of the game is that there is a hungry horse running around the supermarket and you have to satiate its hunger by using watermelons and bananas that you find around i downloaded the model from open game art uh, everything else was a basic mesh instance I added this little health bar at the bottom of the screen that shows the player how much uh, hunger that the horse has left. And after filling up the bar, you get a little windscreen. I ended up not having enough time in an hour to implement a, like a major mechanic, but it was still interesting to see what I can come up with in an hour. And now it's time for the great showdown. Each dev gets a full day to build a real-time strategy game, starting with Wishbone Games. After those last two I made, I really gotta redeem myself, otherwise I'm gonna be banished from the Blackthorn Prod YouTube channel. With that said, my idea is that the sun has died, which means that there's no light. Wow, what a fun fact. But you do have lanterns that you carry around, which are fueled by these drills. Since Halloween is only... 356 days away, I made it a horror themed game with a monster in the dark, so if your lantern goes out, he'll put your lights out. <laughs> I made this game very atmospheric to cover up the game design of all time, which consists of sending out one of your guys with a light, looking for a pump, and coming back to your engineer who doesn't have a light and taking him to repair the pump. But I think it actually turned out really good. I got a lot of sounds for the game, made a main menu, and hopefully made you forget my previous two games. Not trying to brag or anything, but it does look kind of professional. <laughs> just like me. And if you just like me, uh, subscribe. <laughs> boat, 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 boat. So, an RTS in 24 hours, you say? So the 24 hour challenge is the one I fear the most because it's enough time to get attached to my project but not enough time to give it the love it deserves. It's absolutely horrible. Anyways, with the 24 hour version I decided to make actual proper kind of smart AI. I started with the harvest AI and I quickly put together these ball guys, gave them different tools and set them up so that they could go to the nearest resource, collect the resource and then run back to deposit what they collected. I then moved on to the warrior and enemy AI. The warrior AI ran randomly patrols the village and attacks any enemy that gets near it. The enemy AI simply rushes the nearest structure, but focuses on the warriors if it gets attacked. I made different houses to spawn the different AI. I gave all villagers hunger that will consume some of the resources every 30 seconds. And last but not least, I created a spawning script for the enemies to spawn in waves. Your goal is to build out your village and defend it from the waves. If your main building gets destroyed, you lose the game. That's it for me. I'm going to sleep now. So for the big project, I decided to make a board game, which are traditionally classified as turn-based strategy games. So to make it a real-time strategy game, I have you, the player, going against an, a computer opponent at the same time, rolling dice to claim as much land on the board as possible. This game is sort of a farming monopoly game where you claim tiles and the other player will have to pay you whenever they land on your tiles. Whenever the player buys a tile, they can start planting crops on them when they pass by, or they can harvest crops whenever they're fully mature. 
I also have these question mark tiles that I didn't have enough time to add a special mechanic or feature to, so I added little messages to the cards. Whenever you collect your crops, you can sell them at the market. And once you have $200, you can buy a silo. The goal of the game is to build three silos in total and beat your opponent. Adding some more polish to the game, I got some sound effects, a main menu with instructions, and I cleaned up a bit of the UI so it was a little clearer for the player. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the game itself. But with that, I'm excited to see what everyone thinks, and I'm excited to see everyone else's games. Alright, this is called Our Darkest Night. Ooh, I like the ambient sound. The look of this is so cool. The sun is dead and darkness consumes. This is our longest night, our loneliest. So I can send our guys here. I'm going to get them over here. Our engine, we have one engineer, it looks like. Can I get the engineer to go follow them, or is he going to be stuck in the dark? Okay, so he can't go in the dark. I wonder if the engineer can deploy stuff, but they need, he needs these little guys. Okay, okay, I'm starting to see it now. So we need, we need these guys to stay in the light here. And he can follow, he can follow him here. Let's see if we can just run into a drill. I, I guess I would know what it looks like when we come across it, but. Ah, there it is. Here we go, bud. Come fix this. Where this guy dies maybe there is hope but tonight outlives humanity existence time itself cool i really like that that was really cool i like the narrative uh i like the simplicity of the game combined with the atmosphere it was pretty easy to pick up what to do uh i didn't get lost for too too long and uh i really enjoyed it so yeah okay looks pretty good it uh Wow, you, you can really zoom in this game. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it goes real far. Seems like all these guys cost food, so I'm gonna need a- I think I'm gonna need a lot of farms. Well, I did say there'd be a medieval base building game, uh, so let's make some warriors to defend us, because that seems smart. You know, best offense is a good defense. Let's get some lumber so I can build more warriors. We're not using our iron for anything else. Oh, there's an enemy. Oh, and we got him. Sweet. Our people are dying. No, work harder, farmers. Not gonna lie, this wave went at the top of my screen is really having me break up a sweat. I mean, like, why is nothing happening yet? I'm, I'm like, sitting on the edge of my seat here waiting to be, like, bombed or something. Food is our most vital resource. It looks like he's stuck. Oh, okay, never mind. He's not stuck. Also, why are my troops just losing health? Like, am I overworking them right now? Am I just, like, a bad owner? Oh, ooh, thank God I have my warriors over, uh, um, hello? Okay, guess I don't have warriors anymore. They died to disappearing health bar syndrome. I don't know of a good strategy to keep my guys alive. I th I've made it to wave three so far. I made it to wave five earlier. I think I might have to call it, call it quits on this one. Because it's hard to get... See, I got enough wood now, but I won't have enough food to pay my... Uh, to keep my uh, warriors alive. Overall, I really like the game. I think it was really well done. Um, I like the, the environment sway of these trees. I like how everything's set up. This is a very traditional RTS game. I then spent way more time than I'll ever be willing to admit on this game because I actually had fun. I mean, I built a whole ass empire. Turns out the magically disappearing health bars were actually food, so I was kind of starving on my citizens. Oops. Thankfully, during this time, I worked out the meta to this game to a T. So what you first want to do is add a farm and fill it with people. Once they've started making enough food, you're going to make a lumber mill and add more lumber mills. And even more. And that may be a farm. And then add a mine. And once the first wave hits, you're going to start making warriors. This has everything an RTS game needs. It's real. It has time. And I can confirm, it is a strategy game. So if you like this game, please go subscribe to Floki. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm just going to skip the tutorial. I'm more of a visual learner anyway. Sure, probably read the tutorial. How, how do you... How do you move? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I move with the roll of the die. I'm supposed to conquer this donut with my color. Okay, that's simple. So I read the tutorial again, and again, and again, and I'm still kind of confused, but I love the music, so I'm just happy to be here. I think I'm getting better though. Like you can tell that I've got like almost half the board at this point. You know, better than the two squares I had last time. But I'm not gonna let this square win, so I'm gonna practice, like, a lot until I win. Because I'm competitive, and I wanna win. Anyway, after an unspecified amount of time, I absolutely destroyed this AI. He stood no chance, like, oh wow. Which means I've successfully conquered both this and Floki's game. Not gonna lie, this game concept kinda grew on me the more I played. Maybe it's cause I went insane, or it's just kind of a good design. I don't know. But one thing's for sure, it's super stressful because it's like trying to play like, real-time chess. 
Like, I think board games are turn-based for a reason. Some might say that I'm a bit of a grandmaster at this game, which means I know the meta. And that is to smash spacebar, just like... But also, to smash that subscribe button for me, Floki, this guy, and Blackthorn Prod, because we're just great. Super impressive work from every single dev here, but let us know who you think is the champion this time around in the comments. And remember that you can also learn how to make video games with our brand new launcher course. You'll create a complete video game, learn fascinating new skills, gain access to an incredible community, a private game jam, and much more. The link is in the description. And with that said, stay tuned, subscribe, to the channel, we've got some crazy videos in the making. And yeah, see you real soon, guys. Cheers.